People are literally dropping dead when standing in queues for fuel. People are being stabbed to death, literally, when trying to get their essentials. Where are the solutions? Where are the answers? If by any chance the leaders cannot fathom a tangible solution or needs time to cough one up, then where is the empathy for the people and their suffering? Every minister in the government, every parliamentarian, every politician, when they come out to go anywhere, they have their vehicle brought into the entrance. They don't have to figure out from where the fuel is coming, who got it for them. The car is fueled up and ready to go. Heck, they don't even have to care about the prices. Then diesel ki yeh. Adha the. Adha vena kotha the. Oh. Adha vena kotha. When our politicians uh, go to any place for any meeting and comes back home and switches on the light, all the light will switch on for sure. No power cut for them. Either the generator will kick in to power or solar panels will do their job. If anything, the power from the national grid will provide them unlimited supply. The politicians don't have to figure out wait, who's going to pay my bill. The ministry will pay it for them. When they go to the kitchen, food is there magically. They don't have to figure out gas prices or where to get gas. Gas is delivered to their homes and they will have food on the table to eat at any time they please. Gas prices were increased uh, in around 2,000 rupees. So it doesn't mean a thing for them. Because fuel is on unlimited supply, because electricity is on demand and gas supply is continuous, is that why caring, empathy, solving problems or giving a damn is in short supply from our dear politicians? Is it why they act like Marie Antoinette? Can't find bread? Let them eat cake. For the people of this country, it's not about the suffering. Our people have undergone severe hardships. We've gone through a fear of being blown into pieces by taking a simple bus ride. I've experienced that firsthand. Now, that didn't stop us from living our lives. We've undergone severe economic hardships before as well. But our leader's lack of empathy and clarity is a fact that people cannot fathom right now. The failure to give a damn is something that only leads to a change in leadership. This is the same sentiment people had back in 2015. The opportunistic opposition back then was raging bull after bull against former President Mahindra Rajapaksa. The former president remained silent. Didn't come amidst his people to tell the truth, to expose the bull. It cost us everything. The country went back from growth to the depths of hell. Now we are at that precipice again. Mr. President, on November 18, 2019, 6,924,255 Sri Lankan citizens entrusted their lives to your hand, knowing very well that you are not a typical politician. You don't kiss the babies and make small talks. We've seen you try that recently and we appreciate that. But your trying was not why we kept our faith in you. We kept our faith in you it's because you had a different vision for this nation, a refreshing vision. Right now, our nation is in distress. Economically, there is doom and gloom on the horizon. People are suffering. Whilst we see you understand the situation, we really don't see any solutions being taken immediately or better yet, communicating those decisions to your people, or at least an attempt by your end to tell the people your calculated steps and plans to get out of this crisis. We hear a lot of promises, yet we see a dearth of solutions. To meet that doom and gloom, we need a gladiator. In fact, that same gladiator who had enough when our motherland was getting hacked by a worthless, ruthless terrorist called Prabhakaran and supported a president with all his heart and soul to get rid of it. Instead of talking, that gladiator took matters to his hand, eradicated the terrorists militarily and succeeded. Our nation right now needs that gladiator. We don't need a baby kissing, small talk engaging, diplomatically balancing politician. Right now, we need 
that gladiator. As our president, at this defining moment in our nation's history, you need to make the tough call and ensure your people, 21 billion of them, are safeguarded. No, it's not up to the finance minister, the prime minister, the central bank committee, or any politician. It's not even up to that economic council you've appointed, whose stellar million-dollar brains coughed up the only solution they can. Well, please appoint another committee. The responsibility, Mr. President, is yours and only yours. After all, you are the leader of this nation that 6.9 million chose. जनाधि හැබැයි ඒ තාත්තා තමන් ඉදුව මූතට දැම්මේ රට බේරාගෙන ඉම වෙනුවෙන් මං කිව්වා ඒ ඉන්න 70 බුරුත්ත මූතට දාන්න කියන්නේ නැහැ හැබැයි ටිකක් පැත්තකට කරලා තියලා මේ ගමනේ යන්න කියලා දැන් බැසිල් රාජපක්ෂ කියලා කියන්නේ සහෝදරකමට වෙනද ගන්න හොඳ චරිතයක් වෙන්න නැති ඔබතුමාලට හැබැයි මේ රටේ ජනතාව ඒ චරිතේ වෙනද ගන්න කැමති නැහැ ඒ මේ ක්‍රියා දාමයට කැමති නැහැ ඒ නිසා මේ ජනත හැට නම ලක්ෂයක විතරක් නෙමෙයි ඡන්දෙ දුන්න නොදුන්න ඉපදිච්ච ඉපදෙන්න ඉන්න ඉතිහාසයේ මේ රට රැකගත්තු ජීවිත දුන්න හැම දෙනාම අරමුණු කළේ මේ මෞබිම 21 million Sri Lankans calls this their home ye call this your home our home is falling apart mr president please fix it